Hey, I think we're live. Test, test, test. Excellent. I see at least one person's tuned in. Um, this is always, I should do this more often. I say every time because just tr trying to get everything set up and, and do all the tech stuff. So how's the volume level? It's always a bit of a problem, right, to match the... My voice is obviously softer than when I'm playing quite loudly on the harp. Um, so again, if you can't hear me that well, you might try headphones. But I've got the mic pretty close to, to my mouth, so hopefully hopefully that works. Um, and say hi in the chat if, you're, if you've tuned in. Um, you'll need to be logged into a Google account in order to, in order to do that. But... Uh, Welcome, welcome to this celebration of seven years of Harp Tuesday. Uh, I certainly didn't imagine that uh, when I started Harp Tuesday seven years ago that uh, I'd, I'd still be going and, and it's been a great journey so far and hopefully many more episodes to come. And what I'm, what I'm trying to do, oh, hi Martha. What I'm trying to do today is to do a um, uh, sort of a real time look at learning a piece because I think you teach, you have a lesson, but of course, most of the time you're on your own and you're, and you're, you're practicing. And, and in many ways, it's that practice that is most important, right? The way we practice. And so getting a, a look perhaps at how somebody else practices can be really helpful. And I did something similar to that just recently with this, with this Tournier Super, um, where I was, uh, you got to see me learning it. So, and I've had this thought for a while of, of trying to kind of record every moment of, of practicing a piece. So taking a piece that I want to perform and recording it from the very beginning when I first start working on it all the way through. It would be an interesting project. But uh, anyway, today what I'm looking at is John Thomas's The Minstrels Are Due to His Native Land, which is a, it's a classic piece, theme and variations. And it's something that I've worked on with students and I've, I've played through it several times over the years, but I've never learned it. I've never really worked on it and learned it. So I thought I would, I would attempt to practice it here today. And in a way it's, it's, it's cheating to some extent, right? It's so that I think when we're, what's most helpful, right, is, is, is how to practice a piece that is hard for us and that is something that maybe we, when we first, ta again, that idea of, of taking it from, from not knowing it all, all the way through the process to, to learning it and being able to perform it. And also there's that interesting thing in terms of one's technique and when you're tackling a piece, are you, do you just need to learn the notes or does the, do you also need to maybe expand your technique in order to be able to play it? So that, um, in other words, if, if, if you're taking something that's really easy for you, then all you need to do is learn the sequence of, of notes. Whereas if you're taking, let, let's say that you've never played uh, four note chords before, right? And you're gonna start learning a piece that has four note chords. Not only do you need to learn the notes, but also just the starting to become comfortable and being able to do four note chords. So, um, Oh, excellent. There's somebody here from Wales. Great, because John Thomas, of course, is Welsh um, and, and New Zealand. Awesome. And uh, so that is well, like, I, I think it's great to be learning stuff that pushes your technique and, and that requires that maybe that extra time. Whereas here again, I say this is kind of cheating for me because the in other words, I don't want you to get the sense that if you just practice the right way, it's, it's, it's easy to learn this stuff that a lot of the work I've already done, not on this specific piece, but being able to 
again, just need to learn the notes. And of course, in this case, there's a lot of patterns that, that uh, hark back to other things that I've done, right? And just to, to basic sort of patterns and techniques. Uh, and France, excellent. Hi, everybody. Um, anyway, let, let's, let's get started. So you can, you can download the music. It's public domain. I'm going to post the link here in the chat. And this can be, this can be played on the lever harp with some adaptions. So I have, uh, let me see, sorry, just copy. So here's the, here's the link to, oops. Um. All right, so that first link is to my adaptions for the lever harp and the other one is to the, the uh, ver full version for the pedal harp. Um, so you can follow along. So, okay, it's the theme and variations. Let's get started, get a chance to hear what it sounds like. Um, and so is the theme and variations, this, this first theme, right, is, is, is quite important. It's, it's what the whole piece is gonna be based on. So let me, let me I'm just gonna try reading through this. And again, while I haven't, I never learned it to the extent of performing it, I have read through it. I haven't read through it recently. I've tried to keep myself, you know, kind of fresh, that, that sense of what it's like to approach a new piece. But anyway, here we go. Beautiful, um, haunting, uh, kind of mournful, mournful melody, um, and it's for me. It's it's easy enough that I can kind of sight read through it. Um, a couple things to note. Let me pop up the. Let me pop up. Okay, I think if I. Sorry, where's my scenes? Uh, here we are. But anyway, um, if I if I bring up this music, oh sorry, that's the that's the wrong one, right? This is the one I want. There we go. Um, you can this this by the way right here, right there, that is a repeat sign. It's, it looks pretty interesting in that in that particular edition. In in here, it's uh, much easier to see that it is actually just a, just a repeat there. Anyway, if you're wondering what that is, and for me though, I think I would rather not do the repeats. I feel maybe I don't know. It's an interesting. Uh, in, in oops, uh, let's get rid of this other one as well. Sorry. Um, interesting question. Uh. Feel like it actually flows, flows better, to um, you know, just one time through. Anyway, uh, let me let's go over it again here. So, and how much break do we actually want to do on that? And again, I think download the links, uh, download the the music so you can follow along. I think is easiest. I don't have it up on the screen right at the moment. Thinking about 
that nice, beautiful quality to this, right? So I'm, I'm trying to trying to think maybe a slow close, uh, a rich kind of deep sound, even um, a little soft that, that it has a, a nice depth to it. And notice here the pattern. Right, so it's A, A, and then G. Uh, okay, so this is kind of left over, hanging, <clears throat> and then when we get this G, G7 or whatever, or G minor. Um, back to the A. So even there, we kind of memorize it. So. that are part of this A. And maybe maybe we want to repeat it, maybe we're not. For the moment, I'm not going to do the repeats. Um, then, thinking about the quality of that chord. So, and here, I think bring out that 16th note so that uh, the links don't work. Um, yeah, it's added something at the back. That's very weird. Um, sorry, let me let me try that again. Um, the the links are also I th think um, on my. Did this? This also didn't added some weird stuff. Okay. Let me, okay, let's, uh, let's try that one more time. It's adding something at the end of the link. And I'm not sure why it's doing that. It's very peculiar and very annoying. Um, if you if you go to my website uh, on my blog, there's a post about this event, and there are those two links. Or if you are on a computer or whatever, and can get rid of everything past the percentage symbol at the end of those links, it should work. I'm not sure why YouTube is adding that at the end. Um, you know, that's too bad. Uh, yeah, no, page not found exactly, but, um, I wonder, for example, if, Adding that interesting. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna try. I'm just gonna try something else. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yes, this is. This is um. This is why I should do this more often. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you get everything, get rid of everything after the percentage sign, I just, it's very annoying. Um, so 
somebody's saying that if you uh, right click open in new, on a link and click open a new tab, it should work fine. Hey, another Harpist from France. Hi, hello everybody. Um, yeah. Well, okay, we'll leave it. We'll leave it. Leave it there for the moment. Um, hmm, something to fix for another time. Uh, maybe, maybe some setting on my on my YouTube streaming is is messing with posted links. Anyway, let's let's keep playing some music. So, but again, it is nice to follow along. You can also search, um, just search on archive.org or IMSLP for Minstrels Ado, and you'll be able to find it. Um, okay, so this. Sorry. I'm, I'm wanting to th that the sixteenth note. It's short, but not not too short, and and you know, giving it a certain amount of weight. I think. I'm oh, sorry. This is just this is this, not this. And same thing, a third lower. Let's try that again. It's chord and octave and chord octave. Just going ahead and, and trying to analyze and, and think about in terms of memorizing, especially something like this where there's all these predictable patterns. Now what have we got? Okay, we got all of these, and again, I'm not entirely convinced on trying to do a big break on all of these. Right, so. so right, we got boom, 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 and then octaves, and we're coming down there in the right hand, and then we're back to basically a repeat. This time it's a C instead of a B, just a straight seventh shape. Um, did that go to a over here? Um, okay, so let, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try just uh, playing through that then, thinking about how I want to shape it. Again, this is also where um, time with something right plays a big part so that simply living with it even, even though as I say for uh, I can I can cite read this fairly well just getting a chance to live with it is is really important in terms of thinking about exactly how you want to how you want to play it and how you want to shape it and again what would also be a great thing I'm not going to necessarily demonstrate that on the stream at the moment but is to record myself right and listen back and analyze okay i liked how i shaped this i want you know i want i, I want to think more about this transition here or or the volume here um the, the space between the notes here um and, and and do some analyzation that way uh okay let's look at the first variation so here again we take this 
we've got the same structure, this theme, and, and we can think about like a bar of A, then the G natural, G natural, back to the A, etc. C chord often then you know, goes back to A and G and A and G um, and A. So, and then of course the middle section where we got this C major, C flat, I guess. Okay, so variation one. So I'm just gonna work on that, right? We got this cross under where we're skipping a string. Then we get a similar thing. String those together. challenge. Um, still here everything the streams streams working okay um if you haven't got a copy of the music let me just see if I can get this link uh, link to work um, links to work a little bit better um, just wonder this. No. A little peculiar. Okay, well, anyway, um, hopefully, hopefully you do have a, a copy of the music to follow along with, because I do think that's that's helpful in terms of in terms of knowing what's going on. Um, okay, so that's 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 starting to feel reasonably comfortable. Let's look at the next section. Crossing four 
four under this time, right? Hmm. Notice the left hand is exactly the same as it was in the theme. Yes, we're playing it a half step up. Um, question on lever harp. Uh, let me let me practice a little bit more, and then I'll talk about what we're doing with the lever harp. Um... Mm. And again, what I'm looking for, right? is a sense of building secure uh, surety, right? That, that that feeling of what it feels like when it's not just a scramble. So for example, again, I could maybe try and sight read to this and, and, and do a decent performance of it. But what I'm looking for is not a sense of always having to scramble to find the next note. What I'm looking for is a sense of the fingers knowing exactly where they're going, right? So I'm, I'm kind of practicing right on the edge of that, right? A speed where it's it it it's pushing me a little bit, but it's also I have that sense of comfort. Um, three bars of the fourth line um, it's kind of it's the patterns are a little less um, a little less obvious uh, just the fact that the right hand switching the shapes so we always have an oct or no right we don't even always have it right we don't even always have an octave right so we get this shape third on the bottom right now it's a fourth oh, third and it's a seventh oh, sixth fifth uh, ninth, so we, none of these on those three bars, right hand is never doing exactly the same shape. Thank you. 
section. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just a, 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 and um, it's tempting, right, of course, to start playing the whole piece, the, the whole variation all the way through, but it's paying attention to those spots that are feeling a little bit not quite as good as I would like. Transitions, right, making sure the transitions are smooth. In this case, I'm kind of memorizing it as I go, so so trying to uh, reinforce my memory when it's, when it's not there. Um, okay, a couple questions. So is there a misprint on the last bar of the second? line yes I believe there is um, the first oh right right it's not on, not in my version but yes that's very correct and the, um, that should be a 16th yes um, where is my copy of that one um, Second, last bar, the second line. Oh, right, I wrote it in, yeah, yeah, six, uh, yes, it should be a 16th. Um, okay, so on, on lever harp, let's take a moment to just talk about what we're doing on, on if we're playing this on the lever harp. So, uh, this angle is not, it's not great, maybe. Um, John Thomas wrote this in C flat because that means it's all open strings on the pedal harp. Sounds great. Um, on the lever harp, we're just going to play in C natural. So we'll be in C, and then all those G naturals in the original become G sharps, right? So we're raising everything half a tone. So G natural, raise it half a tone, it's a G sharp. So we can start with those three G sharps. Um, on this harp, I actually have that low A that we start with, so it's going to be...
So there'll be various uh, G natural and slash sharp uh, lever changes throughout throughout the piece. Um, but I think I think they're doable, um, except in the second second variation. Yeah, second variation. So I, I I wasn't able to come up with a way to do the second variation on lever harp, but uh, maybe, maybe you can play around with it. Let's let's talk about the second variation. So this has all these harmonics. Um, Notice the right hand is just doubling it. So we got two, it basically it's like. Transition again. Uh, three, three. So I would, I would put a note. I don't have any fingerings written down here. Just a reminder, because I found myself missing that a couple times. So third bar of the second line, the right hand, that E, not the first E, but the second E, E G sharp, leading to the last bar. We want to do three, right? So we go. Um, and again, e, depending, you may want to write in a ton of fingerings when you're working on a new piece. You may want to write in very few. But if you find yourself missing a spot, then that's a great, you know, write in a fingering or highlight it or whatever. Something to, just to make sure that when you get there, you actually do it the way you want, you want to do it. Um, great. Uh, I'm going to try that one more time. trouble on the transition after the second bar of each each phrase um, just not getting the correct uh, interval place that fourth finger right at the start of this little thing because I've just played it and I don't want to muffle it that quite that early. Same thing here with the E. Ah. used to one two one two one two one two three so I'm just gonna put a bracket over that one two three just as a reminder again to myself that and maybe a three there um, just these little reminders right um, to make sure that you um, once you once you realize that you're practicing something in a way that you don't want to practice it you want to make sure that you do something to change that so that you don't <laughs> you know you don't get there and, and, and find yourself catching it after the fact every time, right? You want to catch it before it happens. Um, uh. A 
etc. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that one for now. Um, I find this you know this const, constant harmonics can be a bit of a a, a bit of a strain. Um, so I think trying you know I'm trying to I'm trying to really relax because we're in this kind of slightly awkward position and just trying to really stay relaxed throughout. So I might even practice completely relax. Sorry. You know, trying to really build that relaxation through all that just to make sure the hand doesn't get too tense. Um, Let's go on to number three. Now number three is great on the lever harp because we don't actually have to, we're gonna set this higher G back to natural. And in the middle section, we're gonna play this chord, uh, the a four, two, one, we're gonna omit the, uh, sorry, a, a four, three, one, we're gonna omit this G so that we don't have to worry about changing it. And that way we don't actually have to make any lever changes throughout this variation, which is great. Um, this is really fun, uh, variation three, we can really push the tempo here, so. to really build build that sense in my fingers of, of the piece. slightly un uncertain. This is a great one to really be thinking about those those inside notes, the notes on the weaker position. So right we'll we'll hear the downbeat. That'll come through pretty well, but Especially that third beat and two three again so it's the two three this one will come through one two three one two three one two three kind of a sense of a little crescendo now he's got these little hairpins marked where we're supposed to and, and, and uh, Again, aesthetically, I don't want to do too much of that. Um, I, I prefer a longer line. So we might, for me, I would might think about a little bit of that. But really, I'm thinking of the, more of a two-bar phrase, just like if in the theme, right, of building. It's built and it's come back a little bit, but we're still still a little higher level and then you know comes back down again so uh, let's try this again felt just a little a little shakier than I would like.
because we've gotten so used to but now here it's right we immediately start in with 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 no no pause on beat two um so let's do that transition uh maybe yeah it's still feeling a little because i go here or i know going to the f the left hand and just kind of automatically wants to play a D because I'm thinking D minor here, but it's remembering that it's still C. And of course here, and again, this is ties into what, what, what we noticed it was doing this kind of suspended chord thing. But here again, this looks like C minor, but I'm playing a D in the left hand. So I'm just trying to, uh, I guess be aware of that. Throughout the piece, it's been three, two, one, one, two, three, three, two, one, two, three, right? One, two, three. Here, in isolation, we might do this one, three, four, right? Because it's an octave, um, plus the sixth down here. But if it's comfortable, and again, I have long, long fingers and big hands, um, it's nice to keep that one, two, three pattern. So for the moment, I'm going to try to continue. switch to four two one here we have that pause it's we, a little bit of a little bit of a writ here right or a little bit of st stretching as we as we move back so anyway let, let, let's try that middle section again nice and slow and, and loud and firm answer some questions before we tackle the last movement so if you have any questions about uh about any of these first few variations um or just kind of like practicing in general or any questions you want to fire at me uh go ahead and type those in the chat and i'll get to them in a moment Awkward for three, two, one. It's also kind of annoying to switch to four there. Um. Maybe I will try three, two, one. And so sometimes, right, you encounter uh, a section like that where you're you're just not sure of how exactly you want to finger it. Maybe it involves both hands, like how we want to take these between the two hands, fingering, whatever. And 
uh, one of the things to do is try to get that section at least at the speed you want to play it because sometimes you might say, oh, this is a great fingering and then it turns out that it's actually really hard or impossible at, at speed. So um, it can be really important then to, to, to make sure that you get a chance to practice that, that difficult section at the speed you want to play it. Um, also, sometimes maybe we just kind of bookmark a spot and say, okay, I'm going to try it this way, and then maybe you experiment with a different way, right? And, and, and uh, try and get a sense of what... Uh, be aware in your mind that maybe that fingering is not settled there, that you are open to exploring some other options. Uh, okay, let's try this middle section again. <laughs> Try to the whole whole variation. good um the left hand felt felt okay on, on these you know that second line for example where it's having trouble finding the c's and then the d's going to find the d there um that felt pretty good i did notice when i started it um that i just wasn't convinced on the tempo so let's see we finished into it. It says agitato, right? And I think we want to, it's, it's, so, it's so exciting. It's fun to really play it fast. Um, or, or if we're playing on this lever harp coming from whatever it is. And that fast I'm not sure again I want to listen to that like that's probably a little bit too fast I think um, and again maybe I would want to start that variation three with a little so -da -dee -da -da -dum -ba -da. so we because it's hard as a listener right to be thrown into suddenly there's all these notes going on and then it becomes so important this that starts so that we lock into the fact that it's one two three 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 um, so again if we maybe kind of do a little bit of a, a little bit of um, uh, 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 a start where we're we're kind of getting you know starting a little bit slow and and and, and moving into it. Not my work. I don't know. Hmm. Anyway, cool, fun, fun variation. Okay, here's someone. I'm currently learning this. I'm currently learning this with my teacher Janelle Lake. And she told me that John Thomas wrote this piece to express the hope of his harp going to someone that will play it after he passes away. Huh. So, yeah, I, I, um, it's, it's a beautiful piece. And, of course, John Thomas, right, he was a um, fantastic harpist, wrote a ton of music. And until recently, he was, he was the last royal harpist. And now that tradition has, has, has 
start it up again. Um, and yeah, I, I was actually going to post a couple of links about him, but links again seem to be having some problems. Um, but if you search search Google on John Thomas, you'll find out some more about his life. There's a, a nice article on the uh, Adlius. Uh, I can't can't think the music publishing company um, uh, about him. So. Um, and again, right, something like this, you can really tell it's written by a harpist, fits so nicely under the hand. Um, any other questions? And is, is audio okay? You can hear my voice, hopefully, to some extent. Um, it's not too loud with a, with a harp. Um, so let's, let's look at this last, last variation. And again, please, if you've got any questions, fire away. Um, Last variation, Resoluto, we get some great four note arpeggio practice. to note here again in something like this I would be kind of just just automatically I'm kind of I'm kind of punching the the off beats right to get that get it really so even it can be helpful to um, to, to emphasize the not the not the beat not the one two three four one two three but the one two three four one two three, four because those are the ones that are a little bit harder to hear, a little bit more likely to get lost. Um, notice there that he uses this G sharp, is a, it's an enharmonic with a flat same sound, so that we get to place this seventh shape and we get, which is kind of cool because if we did, oh, we don't have that A, right? If we did, if we did an A arpeggio, would run out of notes. Um, strings. So this is this is kind of cool. Uh, let me try this again. Christy Lim, yeah, seven years, a long time. Thanks for tuning in. Um, so, and notice, of course, that we still got basically the same chord structure, right, as, as the intro. Um, so it's all, all, the, all these patterns that continue. So let's try a little bit faster. Eventually, do we want? Let's see. So, like, and again here, this is this. Like, I don't know that we necessarily want to play it as fast as we possibly can. Transitions are a little bit shaky, um, but anyway, fun, you know, fun, fun, fun piece to play, right? Um, notice treble clock. We're jumping up. Same thing, down a third. Those two bars, uh, four, four bars, right? So one thing, 
Um, one thing I'm aware of is the fact that I'm here. And earlier on, we, we would have kept that, I think, right? Like, you think about the third variation. Um, yeah, we go. We're still starting on the same note, but here we move up, right? So it's still, still a C, but it's a second inversion instead of first. So I, I just noticed that it's, I have to think about that, right? Like it's, it's, it's not, it's not necessarily automatic. That one felt pretty good. Not bad. Okay, a little slower. Again, being aware of those spots, um, and uh, where, where you're just feeling a little uncertain, right? Where the hand is not automatically going where you want it to, and, 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 and being aware of those and trying to try to make them feel more solid. So let's look at this second ending, eh? Um, get some, suddenly we get a bunch of modulation, so getting into it. <laughs> example of why various sort of exercises can pay off because here okay we see this is just a, a arpeggio right um, and uh, if that's comfortable then it's easy you know sure there's a lot of notes but really we did it's again that idea of not having to read every note we just see a pattern and we can follow it a little hard because we maybe depending on the harp we might feel like we have a little bit of a lack of space up here. Um. And again, right, I don't, I don't really need, I notice, okay, this is an E shape, right, E arpeggio, um, E flat major in this case. I just get to go up on that. So let's do that transition again. Um. Bad. 
let's get into it a little bit. Um... Beautiful, beautiful ending, right? We, we just return to the very simple, um, simple theme again. Um, so, so there you have it. Again, this, this last one, I would, I would want to play around and settle on a tempo, right? It's fun to really just rip through it, but um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure how fast we actually want to go. Um, we want to still have it be clear what's happening. And anyway, something, something that I would, again, is you live with a piece, right? That, that it's not just the, the, sure, we can, we want to be, we don't, we may want to be effective in how we practice, right? To minimize, make effective use of our time. But there's also, in a way, no substitute for just living with a piece over time and how it might change and grow. Um, I want to talk about this one on the lever harp because this is the one where we have to do the, the, the biggest changes. Um... Um, drag over here. Uh, okay, so actually, maybe not so. I'll bring this back over here, and this window capture. Yes, excellent. And then okay, drag it over here because I'm moving the wheels in a little bit. Great. So hopefully you can sort of see what's going on um, on that. Okay. So here, let's let's talk about some of the options here because I'm I'm not certain what is the best option. So right, this is it's that separate right, different key. Okay. So this. is written. Uh, let's go on and we'll talk about why we might do that differently. Uh, sorry. Now, of course, we can't do this beautiful thing of doubling the A flat with a G sharp. In this case, it's A natural. And anyway, we can't, we can't double that. Now, we could try to go... Right? We could and replace at the last minute. Sorry. Um, careful, I'm just going to move this mic a little bit. Um, that is an option. We'll talk about some other options here in a moment. Uh, Now this harp goes up to the high C, so I do have this B up here, but a lot of harps don't, right? They might only go to the A, 34 string harp, right? Um, and then whatever it is, uh, oh, I have this low A, haha. <laughs> um, so okay, so we could do that then, basically it's written if we have that high B. If we don't have that high B, and if we want to not try to play that A twice in a row, here's an option that we could do. And so this one, even this this one. So this is the the um, let's see, can you 
see my hand, no, it disappeared. Okay, second bar of this top first line, right? We could go. First eight notes the same. Next eight notes, we're gonna play an octave lower. Oh, sorry. Here with this with this G sharp, the, the doubled A, we're gonna go, we're gonna do an A inversion. So root position as and then an A inversion. And just do the same thing an octave higher. So and then I can't read it very well over there, but okay. Here, same thing is that second bar of the top line. First eight notes is written, next eight notes just an octave lower than written. So that means we only need this B. So it would sound like this. But again, we're we're not playing this G chord here, so we, we change. Am I looking at the right version? Um, maybe I'm looking at the wrong version. Anyway, uh, we should be changing our G natural. But in the left hand, we're just playing this four three one chord here uh, without worrying about this G. Um, and then in terms of the ending, I think on the lever harp. We're not going to try to do that modulation in the second ending. We'll just do the first ending, uh, right? The uh, whatever it is. that makes sense to some extent um, and yeah, let's, let's uh, turn this off right. and surely that will sound right oh no I do have that G natural there no yeah. hmm looks like I missed something there anyway maybe I'll try to upload another version um, all right, uh, so that's that's basically it for the playing. Um, any comments, questions? Uh, let's see. Oh, here's somebody who started playing seven years ago on September on September tenth. Uh, ha! Exactly ten seven years. Um, yeah, I'm just checking to see if I missed any questions. Oh, hey Dennis, hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, that looks good. So, uh, let's see. Let's see what else. Thanks. Um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Oh, if you, yeah, this is all, you know, of course this was all free, but if you feel like um, you want to send me a tip, uh, I wish these links were working. I do have a, I do have a page um, where you could send me something via PayPal. Let's that and paste it under up here options let's try this does that work no okay well again if you, <laughs> you can get rid of the get rid of the uh, the uh, the percentage sign and everything after it and that will that will work. Um, and also, I just want to spam. You might want to buy something on my online store. Copy and paste that. <laughs> um, okay, let's do Donald for Christmas. So, but yeah, th thanks thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, this was fun. Again, I always say when I do one of these, I always say I should do do it more often. Just get get more accustomed to to the the whole process. But it is it is a fair bit of setup as well. And and um, so anyway, uh, but hopefully hopefully it all all worked. In this case, the archive will be available if 
you know, if you want to watch this later. And hopefully this was just a useful and potentially interesting look at, at somebody learning things. And again, I, as I say, this isn't necessarily a fair example that um, you're not necessarily going to sit down and in an hour kind of have a handle on a, on a piece, depending on the, on the complex complexity of the piece and, and, and the challenge for your technique. But it, it maybe gives you some ideas in terms of your own practice of, uh, of things you can do and, and, and that idea of deliberate practice and, and, and trying to think about, okay, is this feeling the way I want it to, right? So, so even from the beginning, trying to build that sense of security in the hands of everything working the way you want it to. Um, yeah, any, any other questions or comments? Uh, and then I think, um, I think I will, I'll, I'll say goodbye. Um, yeah, no problem. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, hey, yeah, thanks. Happy, happy, happy Christmas. Um, and uh, yeah, looking forward to new year. Got some, got some projects in mind. Um, and again, let me know like if something like this is is useful. I can potentially do more of this idea of of kind of behind the scenes look or whatever of, of practicing. Um, and again, I'm always always interested in 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 ideas for Harp Tuesday episodes. So feel free to email me. It's info at joshlane.com. And you can find that on my website as well under contact, I believe. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. So thanks everybody. I mean, you're the reason, right? That uh, that Harp Tuesday is is seven years old. That that you tune in and watch, and um, that makes it makes it worthwhile to to keep doing. So, um, yeah. Have a have a wonderful holidays, and I will. I'll see you. I'll see you on on YouTube soon. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>